hey, everybody, it's Higher Things coming with a new project called I'm New Here. I, I'm new here to the church. And so this is a, a sort of a jumping off point for discussions that you can have with your pastor about Luther's small catechism, about the core of our faith. What do we as Christians, as Lutherans believe? And, and how can we, we actually find this as, as good? So uh, Pastor Richard and I are going to be sort of walking through the parts of the, the catechism. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. This is exciting. Fun. I'm excited yeah. about this too. Um, let's dive right in then. So uh, we're going to tackle this uh, pretty quick. Uh, we're going to tackle the first and the second commandment today. And again, this is not a comprehensive everything you need to know about the, the first and second, but it's, it's a jumping off point for you to, to carry forward this discussion with your pastor. But uh, the first and the second commandments, I guess first, um, what are they and, and how do we sort of categorize this as law? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, right from our catechism, it says, you know, the first commandment, you shall have no other gods, right? Mm -hmm. And so we we hear that. Uh, second commandment, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. And so the first two are talking about God himself, right? And uh, as we kind of have this, um, I, I think it's important to, to recognize as soon as we start to talk about this, we're going to talk about God's law first and the Ten Commandments. This is how we know uh, what God would expect from us. And we always end up looking at the wrong thing with that. We look at at us. But the, here's the thing about laws. They actually have a lot more to say about the person who, who makes the laws than the person who may or may not be following them. So every time there's a rule, the person who gives the rule tells you about themselves. So if I tell you in, in, in my truck, Pastor, there's a commandment, thou shalt not listen to country music. You can learn about me. You, you can learn that I have good taste. Um, and and in the same way, if God is saying, um, despite how you feel about country music, don't have any other gods, he's actually saying, I actually really want to be God to you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and, and real briefly, I mean, this is with all the Ten Commandments, you know, that, that God doesn't just sit down like pen this out and say, you know what, I'm going to get these. They're going to hate this. And they're, oh my goodness, they're going to hate this one. They're going to really, really struggle with this one. So I'm going to have them do that. No, I mean, if you think about this, behind every commandment is a divine gift that God wants to give to us and protect. So when he says, hey, uh, honor mom and dad, he's protecting the gift of authority. When he says, fifth commandment, do not murder. He wants to protect the gift of life. Sixth mm -hmm. commandment, do not commit adultery. He's protecting the gift of marriage, and then on and on and on. The gift of property, the gift of a good reputation, the gift of contentment. These are all good gifts that he bestows and wants us to have uh, because he loves us. And he says, right. what, don't do these things so that you, what, don't ruin the gifts. And the first and second commandment, he wants us to have him. He's a jealous God. He wants to be our God because in him, because in him, we have forgiveness, life, and salvation. And the second commandment, we want to have his name, which is tied to good doctrine. False doctrine, it hurts. It hurts us. It hurts others. It gives us, uh, it deceives us. It leads us through temptation, uh, leads us through all sorts of problematic things. So he wants us to have him. We want, he wants us to have his good name and good doctrine about him for us. Right. So the second commandment, it's not just sort of like, don't say bad words when you stub your toe. It's God's name is so powerful that he gives it to you with purpose. And with his name gives you his reputation, his identity, it, it, it's doctrine. It's, it's what do we believe about this God that we talk about? And, and in both cases, it's, it's God giving a gift because he knows in this world, you're going to need stuff. So we want you to be able to, to find a, a place to, to get the stuff that you need. Uh, because like I, I can go looking for tacos in the bathroom and I'm not going to find them. And in the same way, I can go looking for salvation under, under wealth, under power in this world, under, under popularity, under all these things, and I will not find salvation. He says, I'm going to be a jealous God because none of those other things can save you. So only come to me for that. And if you want to know who I am, if you want to know whether or not it's safe to come to me, this is who I am. And he gives you, he gives you his identity. And he says, protect this name because it's, it's powerful because it's good. And you're actually supposed to have it. It's not that you're never supposed to know who God is or say his name. It's that you're supposed to know exactly who his name is and, and, and find nothing but joy in it. Right. Absolutely. You know, and, 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 and again, looking at these commandments that he has, think of them as fences, if you will. These fences are protecting these good, again, I cannot stress this enough, these good gifts that he longs to give yeah. to us. And, and the reason why he's trying to protect these good gifts is because we really have three enemies. We hear this later on in the Lord's Prayer. We're mm -hmm. praying against what? The old Adam, the sinful nature in all of us. We're mm -hmm. praying against the devil himself. We're praying against the ideologies of the world. All three of those things are going to what? They're going to be like that little kid that's on the beach that wants to destroy that sandcastle, you know, or that, that, that kid who wants to knock down that, uh, that, that house built of cards. And so 
our sinful nature of the devil in the world, they want to what? Destroy these good gifts. They want to wreak havoc. They want to deceive. They want to twist and to pervert. And God puts up these commandments to protect these good gifts, to protect his name, to protect who he is, to protect uh, the gift of rest and the gospel in his word. Uh, the gift, of, again, we've talked already about the gifts of good authority and, and, and life itself, a good reputation. And so, uh, man, if we look at that perspective, God's not just some sort of killjoy. He actually cares for us. He loves us. He wants us to be right. with him, to abide in him. You use this word sin for the first time. Uh, sin is when you break God's Ten Commandments, and, and sin breaks stuff. Like, this is yeah. why God calls it a sin. Sin breaks stuff. When you go looking for salvation in a place that can't give it, something is worse. And, and sometimes you can feel it when, when something is broken, and sometimes only other people can. And sometimes nobody can feel it at all yet, but that doesn't mean that it's not broken. So so when we, we, we talk about these things that sort of tear down, uh, God would have us away from sin. That, that breaks stuff. So he builds these fences to keep us in with him. But but what happens then when we find ourselves outside of the fences anyway? Well, yeah, and, and you hit that. The the the, the commandment is it, it protects us. And I always say it protects us from doing stupid stuff to ourselves and others. Mm -hmm. But like you said, we sin, which was we miss the mark. That that word itself yeah. is to miss the mark. We miss God's holy will. And so when we sin, uh, that should drive us to what we call contrition, repentance. And then when we realize, man, you know, I, 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 I've, I've broken this commandment. You know, I've, I've, I've done what this, I've, I've actually gone over the fence. I've actually destroyed a gift of God. You know, maybe I've uh, destroyed his name or I've created an idol in my life and, and displaced God, uh, this God who's jealous, who wants to be my God. And I've displaced him with another fictitious idol in my heart. When that happens, then that drives us to repentance and contrition so that we might have open ears to hear Jesus, the forgiveness of sins, the one who fulfills the law in our stead, the one who kept that law perfectly in our stead. Absolutely. So talk to your pastor about the first commandment, about the second commandment. Read in your catechism, what does this mean? And learn more about it. But uh, that that's it for our time today. So uh, come back for another video. Thanks, guys.